Savannah, Tennessee is rich with history, and the River Heritage Museum preserves the impact the Tennessee River has had on the area's life and culture. They just want people to understand how important uh, the river is to this area and, and was throughout the, the centuries, from the Indians, through the Civil War, through the Trail of Tears. So it's really important to, to see how the history has changed and the river has made those changes. The museum occupies a circa 1939 building, which was once Savannah's post office. Inside, life along the river unfolds from prehistoric to modern times. The river's rich past was studied by Robert Bruce Wade from Trenton. He pioneered the in-depth study of fossils and discovered the world-famous Coon Creek Fossil Formation in 1915. While most paleontologists will discover 10 to 15 new species in a lifetime, Wade discovered 180 at Coon Creek alone. For thousands of years, native peoples had relied on the river for their lives and livelihood. Artifacts discovered over the years and on display in the museum shed some light on the habits and habitats of these civilizations. The arrowheads and tools discovered along the river show the diversity and ingenuity of these groups. We also have the famous effigy pipe, which was housed at the Smithsonian for um, several years and has been on tour before, and um, we're really proud to have that. The river served many purposes during the Civil War, transportation, fortifications, gunboats. Both sides of the conflict sought dominion over the river. Pittsburgh Landing would probably be the most historic aspect because from here Grant had his headquarters and he went down to Shiloh uh, to Pittsburgh Landing during the Civil War, and that's where the gunboats came in and were able to, to attack. The war brought many changes to the river and ushered in the great era of paddle wheel steamboats. These steamboats represented the highest technology of the day, and scores of them plied their way up and down the river, toting all manner of cargo. Passengers, traveling for business and for pleasure, found a new level of luxury in the flat bottom floating palaces. The museum now takes a turn to the modern with a display of freshwater pearl farming and the mussels that inhabit the river. Before the proliferation of plastics, many items, like buttons, were made from mother-of-pearl. That's the inside coating of the hard shells. The River Heritage Museum is a great Savannah stop with an interesting and growing collection recounting the river's influence on West Tennessee. We hit the jackpot during our visit to Savannah. The famous Delta Queen steamboat landed at Wayne Gerald's Park, a day trip for the passengers to visit Shiloh. The Delta Queen is a national historic landmark and about as close as we can get to a true 1880s riverboat experience. She's powered by steam and she's powered by the paddle wheel. Uh, we still use that same system. Now, this is a more modern uh, system, of course. And uh, more safe. Back in those days it was the beginnings of the engineering of pressure vessels like you know the boilers and all. So uh, we're a lot safer. This boat was built in 1927. You're referring to kind of the pioneering days in which they used uh, wood for the hulls and so they were a lot more delicate and they would have a lot more accidents and uh, wouldn't uh, actually be able to be as large and to carry as much in the way of cargo and passengers. The Delta Queen is beautifully appointed with rich woods, deep carpets and rugs, and a grand staircase befitting any southern mansion. The height of um, passenger luxury on riverboats in America was between the end of world, uh, the uh, end of the Civil War, until about 1890, when railroads really began to take most of the passengers. And in that time, when the boats were competing with railroads. They used every trick they could think of to supply luxury and uh, you know, excellent accommodations, entertainment, wonderful food, etc. In fact, during that period, most of the fancy river boats exceeded the luxury of the hotels on land. And so uh, that's the era that we're trying to recreate, uh, the Victorian era. I've always referred to the Delta Queen as a floating country inn or a floating bed and breakfast and uh, it's like a close-knit family on here between the passengers and the crew. So uh, it makes it a lot of fun in my dealings as I walk around with everybody. For Captain Chengeri, piloting the Delta Queen and watching over his crew of 80 is a dream come true. I've always been interested in steamboats ever since I was a kid. 
I was six years old and already had an interest in Mark Twain and Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. So ever since I was a kid, the paddle wheel steamboats have been a hobby. But in the case of the Delta Queen, with this being uh, 80 years old and a National Historic Landmark, uh, there is a great honor to be the captain of this vessel. The, the boat is so rich in history and the boat not only uh, represents uh, a historical career working uh, in our early years out of San Francisco and then all the years running the Mississippi River, but the boat represents a bygone era. You know, there were thousands of steamboats in the mid-1800s and it's just down to just a few that you can count on one hand and uh, the Delta Queen uh, is very, very special and it's a great source of pride for me. The Delta Queen has been plying the rivers of mid-America since 1948, but she was actually born into service on the West Coast. She and an exact duplicate called the Delta King were built as overnight ferry service vessels between San Francisco and Sacramento on the Sacramento River. So the word Delta in both of these boats refers to the California Delta, the Delta on the Sacramento. So they were overnight ferry boats and uh, you could even drive your car on board and go to the opposite port. They would leave at 6.30 p.m. and arrive at 8 o'clock the next morning at the opposite port. And like all good Americans, the Delta Queen served her country during World War II. We all remember that uh, December the 7th, 1941 was the day of the Pearl Harbor attack. Her first uh, encounter was on December 13th, carrying wounded soldiers from hospital ships directly from that attack in San Francisco Bay, because by then she'd been put to use as a yard ferry boat with the U.S. Navy. And the rest of the war, her duties were to take uh, newly trained recruits from Camp Stoneman, California on the Sacramento River to San Francisco Bay and put them directly on troop ships for overseas. After the war, Cincinnati businessman Tom Green bought the boat for a paltry $46,000. Completely boarded up for protection, the Delta Queen remains the only flat-bottom riverboat to have traversed the Panama Canal. One million dollars of renovations were made in 1947, including new staterooms and a luscious new dining room where the automobiles were once ferried. This room also includes a stage area for nightly entertainment. Over the years, some other modern conveniences have been added, including some tools that old riverboat captains could never have imagined. I was uh, thinking about an old pilot that worked with me on this boat a few years ago. And when he was being interviewed for a TV show, uh, they asked this old pilot that I guess was in his 80s, what's the difference between the uh, men of today working the steamboats versus uh, the men years and years ago working the steamboats? And his response was, back then we had iron men and wooden boats, now we got iron boats and wooden men. So it's a little bit different, of course. Uh, back in the days uh, before you had GPS and radar and uh, the, the modern aids to navigation we had today, it was a tremendous amount of instinct that a pilot had to have to move the boat up and down the river. That's not to say that the, the uh, acquired instinctiveness has to be of high caliber for a pilot today, but still, uh, it, it was a special challenge back then. And of course, we didn't have the improved channels on the river that we have today, buoy channels. And, and you know, they say the average life for a steamboat in 1850 was five years because if it didn't burn down, it'd run aground, punch a hole in the hull, and cause them some problems there. But we have uh, quite a few modern aids in navigation, and it sure helps us a lot as we travel the inland waterways. And therein lies the unique riverboat experience modern convenience mixed with the simplicity of a bygone era. I grew up in the Hudson Valley on the Hudson River and they were running the Hudson River Dayliners then that were steam powered um, uh, paddle wheel steam boats and used to watch those go by and hear the calliope play and so when I found the Delta Queen I found home. Did she say calliope? It had originally been on a showboat called the Water Queen that sank in the Great Kanawha River in 1937. And it had been stored in a garage, unused and uh, forgotten 
but when one of these gentlemen discovered that it was available, uh, they decided to put it on the Delta Queen. Now at first there was a great controversy about that because it was always those gaudy, glitzy, cheap boats that played the calliopes, and many thought that the Delta Queen was much too dignified to be subjected to such, to such a thing as that, but uh, after it was installed and began playing, it soon became apparent that it was the voice of the Delta Queen and that it was admired all up and down the river and called attention to us, and so did good service for the company and uh, entertained the people along the banks. So with the joyful sound of the calliope, the big paddle wheel begins to turn and the Delta Queen continues on her journey to Chattanooga. This is a, an easy way of life. It's a chance to slow down. It's a chance to relax. Sit out on the deck, smoke a cigar, watch the trees go by. It gives you a real sense of peace and uh, a connection with the higher power. I've been writing since 99. Uh, fell in love with the uh, Cajun culture tour down in Louisiana that they did. And then I started adding trips um, and then discovered it was much nicer. You just settle into a nice boat ride and you had to get off. So I just decided to do them back to back. Uh, so I get on and I stay on. And uh, uh, when I leave, I never, I'm, I'm always anxious to come back again. When you're on a cruise ship, you're looking at sky and water. But on the river, uh, there's beautiful scenery that you're seeing constantly around every bend of the river. We have a cruise director on board and an orchestra providing shows and entertainment, plenty of good food on board. And it was Mark Twain, I guess, who said uh, being on a river boat is, is like the boat's not moving at all and it's the shorelines that keep on sliding by. So there's, there's, there's plenty to see on the river and I think we all have a, a matter of curiosity where we always are wondering what's around that next bend in the river.